stranded in my deepest trials till the night I met Jesus at the end of the aisle. Now I know
and God convicted him yes. under the oak. Okay? Yes. 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 God's here. Yes. Yes. Need help. God's here. And yes. 25 yes. years ago, God right? set me free as a family old boy. But I'm going to still keep on serving yes. Jesus. Yes.
Yes, he is. Never late. Always on time. Amen. Amen. You say, well, wait a minute now. He was four days late. <laughs> no, that's what Mary Martha thought. Yeah. Yeah. He was right on time. Yes. Amen. And uh, boy, don't you feel good in here tonight? Amen. Ain't you glad you serve a risen Savior? Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. He's not in the grave. That's right. Not the ground. He's alive forevermore. Amen. Look over at your neighbor tonight and say, it's so good to see you in the house of God. So good to see you in the house of God. <laughs> Look at him now and tell him, say, don't this feel better than the jail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I tell you, uh, I can leave right now and say it's been good to be here. Amen. Amen. But the hour has come to when it's but fell my lot to preach. And I love singing. I've always had. I've singing ever since I was about eight years old. And I'm uh, 60, 52 years of my life I've been a singer. And, uh, but God called me to preach. Amen. And uh, he said, sing a little, preach a lot. Sometimes <laughs> I won't uh, sing a lot, preach a little. <laughs> but that don't always coincide with the will of God. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you were here this morning, God came by. Amen. Yes, amen. Thank God he did. And I pray that you be praying he come by tonight. Amen. Yes, amen. So we got several churches that's uh, uh, represented here tonight. Uh, we got some folks from charity, and we're praying so hard for Leslie and uh, and Teresa, a whole church family. And uh, Leslie's battling, battling cancer. Most of you know that. And we need to pray for one another. That's, that's what right. Bible amen. Says. Yes. amen. Right. Pray you one for another. Bear you one another for another. And so we got some of their folks here tonight. Uh, Faith Free Will, uh, they allowed us to park over their church. It was pouring down rain Friday. I was going to put in a 50 out plug back here. It was pouring down rain, and I, I called uh, Pastor Wayne. I said, it would be all right if we park over there. And uh, he said, sure it would. So we are parking just a little across the aisle, a little way over there, a couple of hollers and a couple of hills. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and so they turned the church out tonight. And Amen. And our church came over to be with you all. Amen. Amen. And, uh, yeah, give them a hand. Amen. <laughs> and uh, Brother Wayne said, well, uh, Pastor Clinton and church is good to support us during our revival, and I want to support them. Okay. And that's how churches used to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And now everybody, I'm afraid somebody's going to get one of their members. Uh, if your member's that easy got, they was already headed out. Anyway. That's right. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and some people look better going than to do a coming. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's the word. And we've got other churches here tonight. Amen. I'm trying to get off of that. My mind just won't let me get off of it. Amen. But uh, it's so good to see that uh, Pam's here tonight. And uh, where's Jeremy at? Amen. Back sleep. That's exactly where he's at. Amen. And, but she's a... Uh, they passed down at Union Grove, and then we had got Brandon Page here tonight. Yeah. And I didn't know that there was but one Brandon Page until I rode by Mitchell Cook's church up here on 73, and it was congratulating Brandon Page and his wife on their anniversary. And I thought, Brandon Page started going to church there? And, uh, <laughs> and so nothing wrong with that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I asked Brother Clinton and Cindy today, I said, man, as I said, Brandon Page and his wife going to church at, at Mr. Cook's now, and they said, no, that's a different Brandon Page. said, we seen that too. And said, I had to call his mom and make sure it was him. <laughs> and so uh, good to see Brandon Page. I think he just moved from Indianapolis back down toward this way. It's so good to see him tonight. It's always good to see his smile and face. And, uh, Brandon, what church is that you're affiliated with now? Faith Baptist in Canapolis. Faith Baptist Church in Concord. In Canapolis. Canapolis, I'm sorry. And so and then we've got some folks here from Gold Hill Baptist Church. Amen. So, praise God. It's sort of what heaven will look like. Amen. 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 Yes. Except some of y'all sat mighty far apart. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no social distance in that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but won't you be glad of that? Amen. Amen. Uh, let me get right on into preaching for the sake of time tonight. I, I tell you, that song we sang at the end of the aisle was written by a young man way across Georgia by the name of Keith Tanner. 
And she's a dear precious friend of mine. Wrote that on a napkin going to Walmart. <laughs> and uh, said the Lord got uh, stirring his soul about a song and said he couldn't find, had a pen, but he couldn't find a piece of paper in the truck he's in. So he looked over there and there's a Dairy Queen napkin. Thank God for Dairy Queen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> And said he saw. He said I started writing the, the words that God was sending me. And he said when I pulled in the Walmart parking lot, he said that was that song. Oh wow! And, uh, yeah. and so he that sent that song to me, and he said he said I don't know nobody else in the world can sing it with more heart than what you could probably sing it. And uh, and so we've been to sing it. And I tell you, when we get to sing it. I like to see the reaction of people just like it happened here tonight. Yes. Yes. You know what happens? They're not responding to the way I'm singing, the way Mary's singing. They're responding to the message that's in that song. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what happened to them when they got to the end of the aisle? Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, if you've not met Jesus in the free pardon of sin, you're yes. living beneath your privilege. Right. Amen. That's right. I'm telling you, you say, well, I thought it'd be a boring life. Just get saved. Watch. Amen. <laughs> oh, my. If you have your Bible tonight, take it and turn us over to the book of Hebrews. And let's go to chapter 2 of the book of Hebrews. Chapter 2 is where we'll take our reading. <clears throat> verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. The Bible says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to those things which we have heard, least at any time we should let them slip. Yeah. Yeah. For if the words spoken by angels were steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape mm. if we neglect so great a salvation? Mm which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Dear Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word. Hide us behind the cross. Lord, face the lost souls, you save us. There's one drawn cold and indifferent. God, I pray the night be the night they come back to you. Lord, we love you and we'll give you praise and glory for it all. And all these people said, Amen. 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 You say, Brother Randy, what are you going to preach on out of those uh, four verses of Scripture that you read? I thought about this precious uh, Scripture in verse 3. The Bible says, How shall we escape if we neglect? Look at this little word right there. It's so, so great of salvation. I thought about that word. That word so is the biggest little word in the Bible. Amen. 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 You say, I don't know about that. Well, I'll tell you this. You can find it used here in the Apostle Paul's writings uh, describing salvation as being so great. Would you agree with that? Amen. Amen. How many of you feel like it is great in your heart? Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, but that's not the only place that word is used. If you look at John chapter 3 and verse 16, you can hear that word again yes. by, and being used by Jesus to describe God's love yes. for a lost world. Yes. What did it say? It said, for God... So love this world. Amen. Yes. Amen. That what did he do? I mean, how much did he love us so much? Uh, the Bible said he so loved this world that he sent his only begotten son. Hey, where did he send him to? He sent him here. Amen. Yes. Right. And I'm glad he come, aren't you? Amen. Look over to our neighbor and say, I'll tell you, it is a great salvation. Amen. Yes. I thought about this. For God so loved the world. Here it is again in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. Used to describe how great a salvation. And let me tell you, it is great. You say, what's great? It's great that God would love this world enough to create a way of escape for whosoever will. Amen. 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 Now listen, I know there is a nucleus of people going through our Baptist strength right now. 
that is promoting, dear friend, and teaching hyper-Calvinism, what we call that. It's the five doctrines or five points of Calvin, dear friend, and his theology. And uh, his theology said that there were some that were predestined to never have an opportunity to be saved, even if they wanted to. That God had marked those people to never have an opportunity. I want to tell you that's heresy. And yeah. even upon his deathbed, John Calvin debunked his own theory. I want to tell you tonight, when Christ said, Whosoever will, let them come. Honey, he meant whosoever will. And I think that is just so great. You know why? Because one night, that whosoever will was a little eight-year-old boy named Randy Perry, and he called, and I come to run. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, my. You say, what's so great? about that salvation. What well, can I say this to you? It's enlightening. Amen. Amen. Yes. I've thought about that word enlightening. You say, what do you mean? To live in sin is to live in spiritual darkness. Yeah. Right. Would you agree? Yeah. To not be a Christian, dear friend, is to grope in the uh, murky, miry mud of sin and sorrow, dear friend, forever separated from the love of God. Yeah. But aren't you glad that when we were dead in trespasses and in sin, that God commissioned his love toward us and sent his only begotten son, yes. dear friend, that we might experience a, a way of escape. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? You say, well, what's so enlightening about that? I'll tell you what's enlightening about that. Dear friend, it's called, dear friend, getting saved and meeting the Lord Jesus and accepting his salvation is called a transformation. Amen. Amen. What's it called? A transformation from darkness Unto light. Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I've heard people say, well, you can get saved any, but any time you want to, uh, any time that you recite and walk down Romans Road, uh, you can be saved. Honey, I want to tell you, you can get head knowledge that way, yes. but to only get the heart knowledge uh, and to get truly transformed, uh, the Holy Spirit of God must be drawing. Uh, yes. Dear friend, and when He draws, uh, He opens up your blinded eyes uh, and you yes. see the air of your way and he enlightens the way of the cross and you get saved yes. when you see Jesus through an eye of faith. Amen. Amen. So look over at your neighbor and say it is a great salvation. It it's enlightening. But let me say this. It's very so ennobling. Ennobling. You say, what do you mean? How many of you know Satan destroys? Yep. But Jesus delivers. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to shout right there? <laughs> Amen. Can I say this to you? Satan excavates. Jesus elevates. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, wait a minute now, preacher. No, Satan burdens. But Jesus blesses. Amen. Huh? Is that ennobling? You say, I don't know if it is or not. I don't know what the word ennobling, ennobling means. I thought about the ennobling is the effect of salvation that's clearly seen when you consider everything new that it brings. Right. You say, what do you mean? I thought about uh, Gary uh, jumping up here a while ago. He's the only fellow I know that would stand flat-footed and put his foot up above his head. Amen. <laughs> I thought about it as he stood up here a while ago and he was talking about uh, when he got saved. Amen. And took us back to that time when he got saved, when he met the Lord. I'm going to tell you, that's ennobling. You say, well, what's new? What new things did that bring? It brought a new man through the conversion. Amen. Amen. You say, what do you mean? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24, the Bible says, and that ye put on the new man. Everybody say, new man. new man. You know why some people, dear friend, can come to an altar and cry a few crocodile tears and then get back up and walk back out and live just any way they want to? It's because they've never really been transformed. They right. Right. They've never really been enlightened. Yeah. they got a head knowledge, but they missed it 14 inches away, and that's in their heart. That's if right. you ever get it in your heart, dear friend, old things have passed Amen. away. Yeah. And the whole yes. old yes. things. Become new. Amen. Mm -hmm. I 
bed this time. I'm sleeping with a Pentecostal on each end. Let me say, what did he say in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24? And that ye put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see, when you put on the new man, that's ennobling. You say, why is it ennobling? You won't want to go where you used to go. You won't want to do the things you used to do. You won't want to hang around the same crowd that you used to hang around. I'll tell you what, hey, it don't necessarily change the outward exterior, but every now and then it'll even change the outward part of the season. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Boy, I tell you, it's ennobling when you think about the new things that it brings. Brings, dear friend, a new man. Then it brings a new manner of life. Amen? You say, what do you mean a new manner of life? Look what Peter had to say about that in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. He said, seeing then that all these things are going to be dissolved, talking about the passing away of this world. He said, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Oh, my Oh, I've, I've heard people say, well, I tell you now, I got saved. I give my life to the Lord Jesus, but I, tell, I still I tell dirty jokes. I give my life to Jesus, but I still cuss a lot. I give my life to Jesus, but I still like to run with the women or look at the men. I, I, hey, I'm going to tell you something, honey. When you really get saved, dear friend, I'm going to tell you what it will do. It will change your manner of life. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, instead of laying out long pulling a drunk. Honey, you can't yeah. wait to get in the house and hug your kids, yeah. love on your wife, yeah. and sit down and talk to the good master yeah. who loved you yeah. when you were unloved. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. You say, oh, preacher, if you keep preaching like this, I ain't coming back tomorrow night. <laughs> but hey, just wait and don't come back Thursday night. I won't either. Amen. <laughs> You say, what do you mean? All the new things that it brings, it brings a new manner of life. Has your life changed since you had and experienced this oh so great of a salvation? Are you still like you used to be? Amen. You might want to check your heart and see if you really ever got saved. Amen. Oh, I come up in the Baptist. I believe I'm eternally secure in Christ Jesus. My little wife come up in a little Pentecostal church. And they believe, dear friend, that if you sin, you can uh, lose your salvation. Hebrews 9 said he entered in one time to obtain eternal redemption for our soul. He don't make a mess out of nothing he does. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. But I'll tell you what. Yeah. It doesn't give you an eye that believe, dear friend, that we're yeah. being held in the hand of a master that's not lost one that the Father's committed under his kingdom. It doesn't give you an eye the excuse to live just any way you right. choose that's to. Right. That's right. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and insert this right here. If you really got saved and your manner of life really changes, you you won't want to live like you do. Right. And the Holy Spirit, who now has moved in your residence, and the devil had to pack up his rags and go back yes. to hell, where he's from, but now the Holy Spirit lives in there, and now he's your guide, now he's your advocate, he leads you in a path of righteousness. I want to tell you what, where he'll lead. He won't lead you to a cesspool, he'll lead you to the Savior. Amen. Amen. Over the septic tank. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just, mm, Got to sure. change your manner of living. Yep. I thought about the new things that it's going to bring. Boy, they doctors told me two years ago I had about eight to ten years left to live because of the shape my heart was in. And I've been living with that. And Mary, she, she's been on to it for 20 years. She said, I wish to goodness you'd build me a garage. I said, what you own a garage for? And she said, well, it ain't necessarily for me. It'd be for you. Hey, but uh, that's another story another day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, dear friend, as a child of God, I've got a great future ahead of me. You say, why? I want to tell you there's something new, dear friend, that's being built. Amen. Amen. You say, what is that? There's a mansion. Amen. Amen. 
I want to tell you, if you meet Jesus, He'll change the man and they'll change the manner of your life and He'll prepare a mansion just for you. Oh, I like what John had to say about it. In John 14, he said, Let not your heart be troubled, but you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. He said, I go and prepare for you a place. And if I go and prepare for you a place, I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I want to tell you how great a salvation I'm talking about tonight. I've got a master that's building me a mansion. about that white stone. Read the book of Revelation. Amen. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm going to tell you, it's so great a salvation. Mm -hmm. It's ennobling. It's enlightening. Pretty exciting. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Oh, my, 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 my. No wonder the psalmist said, let everything that has breath yes. praise yes. ye yes. the Lord. Yes. Ain't that exciting? Yes. Yes. Several years ago, I got to be at our home church on Easter. They still have sunrise service out there in the cemetery. Right across from the cemetery, there's a big old pasture. We'd stand out there and it about 30 degrees that morning. The wind was blowing as cold as all get out. And we had this couple that had moved up from Miami, Florida, retired, been firefighters down there. And she wanted to be a mountain woman. You know, they bought them a place up there. How many of you know you, you can take the city slicker out of the city and put them in the mountains. That don't make you make a mountain person out of there. Amen. <laughs> and she bought her one of these hearts accords. Y'all know what that thing is? Little thing you hold up there next to you. Got about 21 strings on it. And uh, she bought that thing, got it out of the box, and evidently didn't read the instructions. You're supposed to tune it before you play it. Amen. <laughs> she got up there on that Easter, man, and she wanted to sing. And she started strumming that hearts accord and about every other string was out of tune on it. And I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, that, you know, those are sort of a bluegrass-like instrument. It's what they sort of make that bluegrass sound. You know, and I love bluegrass when it's done right. Amen. <laughs> when it ain't, it's called black grass. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she starts strumming that thing and started saying, What a friend we have in Jesus. Bring, bring. I'm standing out there at the graveyard. I'm telling you, she was driving nails in my head. I mean, I said, oh, my God, we're take that thing away from her. Hey, man, they ought not be an opera singer singing with a bluegrass instrument. Hey, man. Well, hey, all of a sudden, the old preacher got up to preach, uh, and he, he took his text out of John 20, and he said, I'm telling you, folks, uh, he's risen. Uh, ain't nobody said amen. Ain't nobody said praise the Lord. I'm standing over there, and I thought, well, that's why we're here. He said, can't you hear me today? He said, he's up from the grave. He's risen. And nobody was shouting. Nobody was praising the Lord. And all of a sudden, I looked out across that old pasture, and here come about 35 old black Angus cows. And they got right up against the fence where we were, and they lowered their heads. And that old preacher said, won't somebody help me? Praise him. He's risen from the grave. And about that time, them old cows, they started. Man, the Lord looked at me and he spoke to my heart and he said, Randy Perry, if you're not excited about what he did for you, I'll take your excitement and I'll give it to them old black cows. Oh, Sudden, buddy, that thing hit me, and I first said, Glory, glory, glory. You say, Why? Up from the grave, he rose with a mighty victor. You say, What are you saying? It's exciting a salvation. Amen. I might as well preach. Amen. It's exciting. Let me say this to you it's enduring. Anybody believe that? Amen. You say, what do you mean it's enduring? 
The secret to success in this life is staying in love with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. We'll go to Burleson Square tomorrow and you can buy my dinner, all right? <laughs> you say, what do you mean? I'm talking about keep yourself in love yes. with God. Yeah. That's what Jude chapter 1 verse 21 said. Yeah. Then I thought about this. Uh, with his love dwelling in our heart, dear friend, we can endure all things. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I'm really worried about some of these folks in this COVID generation. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You say, well, wait a minute, preacher, COVID's real. You got to tell me I've had it. Mary's had it. My mama died from the results of it. I'm going to tell you something. My mama didn't fall out of love with Jesus when she got it. That's right. Amen. Amen. My mama didn't get mad. My mama didn't get bitter. I didn't get mad. I didn't get bitter. I knew if I got mad and got bitter, I might not get better. So I just well, I just tried to get as sweet as I could, nestle up to him as much as I could. And hey, say as Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I'm going to tell you, it's enduring. How well are you enduring? You say, you ain't got no Bible to prove that. I wouldn't say it if I did. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 7, listen to what Paul had this to say. He said, bearing all things, believing all things, hopeth all things, and enduring all things. Hello. Hello. I mean, every time the little bump comes in the road, it knocks you out. And you ain't got this great sound. This one. You got head knowledge. Because I'm going to tell you what I've noticed. It was amazing when they shut this country down, the pandemic, all the churches shut down. There. You know, for two weeks, President Trump wanted everything shut down and everything. And so that said, well, we've got to do it. And so they did it. And when they finally reopened the church, I looked around, me and Mary got to be home, and of course, uh, you know, we wouldn't work in no way. All the churches scared half to death. And, and so when they opened the church, our church opened back up. On a Wednesday night, I told Mary, I said, let's go. And when me and her got down there, I looked around. Our church runs about 400 on a normal day, pre-pandemic. And, and uh, we probably had, what, 50, 60 people there on that Wednesday uh, prayer meeting night. And I looked around there, and I was sitting there, and I told Mary, I said, I don't want you to look here. I said, look at that and going young. Look at that and going young. I said, look at this one coming in here. I said, would you look at that? I said, the majority of these people that's come to the house of God since it's been reopened are the ones are at the most highest risk if they were to get COVID. I said, but you know what they've learned? I said, some of them is old enough to be my grandpa and grandma and I said some of them's been through the depression and they got through it because God was good. <laughs> Some of them, dear friends, sent their boys and girls uh, to foreign battlefields, and some of them even went themselves. Uh, amen. And God was so great a God that He brought them back. To, dear friend, uh, kept them alive. Kept them alive. And you know what they said? Some of them lived through uh, diphtheria, yellow fever, and every kind of thing you can think of. Uh, and you know what they was? They was taking their place uh, in the house of God. You know why? Because they Amen. 
I say let the government cut all their unemployment funds off and make everybody go back to work. That's what I say. Amen. You say, whoa, preacher, you wind up in jail. That thing libels to get back to the White House. I'm not worried about that idiot up there in the White House. Amen. The one I'm concerned about is holding my soul in the palm of his hand. Right, the only amen. place that idiot up there could drive me is my knees and put me in jail. But hey, I got to tell you, you still got to feed me. Right. Amen. 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 Paul went to jail and he won the jailer to God. Amen. amen. Before you knew it, hey man, they was going to get him chicken and everything else. It ain't bad coming out of the jail if you got the keys to the joint. That's amen. right. Amen. Amen. Huh? amen. Some of you have had to bury children. Do you endure? Was he enduring for you? Get you through it. Some of you had to bury spouses. Was his love, was that salvation great enough to endure to get you through it? You're sitting on a turkey for you tonight. Amen. Why ain't you out on a bar stool? <coughs> huh? Because some of us has lived long enough we done been down the road of the world. Yes. And we've learned, dear friend, if you want real devastation and you really want deception, you just buy into the devil's bag of trickery. Amen. Yeah. And I'll promise you, he'll say, well, I can fix every problem you've got with a, with a bottle of alcohol or a drug or something like that. And, buddy, I'm going to tell you, some of us, was such were some of us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. But God That's right. Amen. was willing to put up with it. That's yes. enduring, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. 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 Mm. I like that. Let me give this. I'm done. It's also exporting. Exporting. You say, what do you mean? How many of you know that we're saved in three tenses? Past tense, present tense, and future tense. Yes. We have been saved. Amen? Yes. Everybody say that. Yes. We have been saved. Yes. Which means justification. Yes. Amen? Amen? We are being saved. Which means sanctification. Now, I want to tell you, there's some badness need to grab a hold of that word. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mary's church used to say, I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost of God. Yeah. Amen. And they had had a little thing with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I told her the other night, I wanted to speak in another tongue. She told me, she said, you got to learn to control the one you got first. <laughs> <laughs> so I backed up the pun. Amen. <laughs> you say, what is what is sanctification, preacher? I want to tell you, dear friend, it's, a, it's sanctification. It's that desire to live a holy life before the Lord Jesus. Us badness, dear friend, have a little word we call consecrated unto the Lord. That's to holy, holy give ourselves to God. Amen. Yes. We are being saved. We're being saved okay. And let me get this. And we will be saved. <laughs> Which means glorification. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paul said, The whole place groaneth in travail, yeah. waiting for the adoption of the wit of the body. Yeah. We groan for it. You say, what are we groaning for? I'm telling you what we're groaning for. One day he'll split those eastern skies and the honey he's are coming back to dear friend and he'll catch us up out of here and he'll get us away and put us on a cloud and take us home, present us to the Father. What did he say? He said, my desire for you is to move you from glory to glory. How do I get from glory to more glory? Take me from this world and take me home Amen. to glory. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, the last two years my little mama lived, she was 81 years old, her little heart was give slap out, had two valves and her heart just wore slap out. Doctor said she needs surgery and they said, we'd have to I opened her chest up. She'd already had one open heart surgery when she was 60 years old. And he says, at her age and what she's already been through, he said, I'll tell you, if it was my mama's son, he said, I'd just take her home. And he said, I'd let her live out her days, being as happy as she could be. 
feed her anything she wants. I said, boy, that's dangerous right there now, Doc. He said, well, she's 81. <laughs> Amen. 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 He said, feed her what she wants, and you just count it a joy and a delight that she's with you every day, every moment Amen. that you got her. I'm going to tell you something. You can ask Mary. You couldn't get around her, and she would start. She'd say, I don't know what's wrong with the Lord. And I said, well, now, Mama, there ain't nothing wrong with him. Might be something wrong with us. She said, well, I think he's hard to hear him. I said, I, I don't know about that, Mama. I said, he never sleeps. He never slumbers. His ears are not too heavy that he cannot hear. She said, well, he ain't listening to me. I said, well, what do you mean he ain't listening? He, she said, I've been up begging him to come and get me. I don't know what's wrong with him. Can he hear me? Hey, man. She said, son, I'm tired of this old world. Your daddy's over there. My two boys over there. My mother's over there. Oh, Ralph Satterfield, the preacher preached me under the gospel of the Lord Jesus. He's over there. And she said, most of all, Jesus is there. And she said, I don't know what's wrong with him. I've been asking him to come and get me. And he ain't come and got me. Ain't got to be something wrong. I said, well, Mom, I've been praying that he lets you stay a little while longer where I can enjoy. She said, you shut that up. You hear me? <laughs> See, y'all laughing. I'll tell you, my mama was serious. My daddy and my sister told my mama when she had that massive stroke in 1999 how I begged God for her life because I wasn't ready to give my mama. My mama told me, she said, when I get down like that again, don't you pray. Huh? You know, I finally got it. Man, you get to a place in your life that you got more over there than what you got over here. And the pull from above, dear friend, is greater than the pull down here. And all of a sudden, everything that had you bound down here began to lose its weight so, and pulls upon you. And pretty soon, I'll fly away. Amen. Hey, and hey, hey, you bow. Glory. Yes, praise yes. Jesus. Amen. What a day that will be. Yes, sir. When my Jesus. I shall see. Yes. Oh, can I say this to you tonight? Close and Mary, give me a song. What kind of salvation is it, preacher? So great a salvation. Amen. My mom went home to be with the Lord December the 18th. We buried her December the 21st. And I thought about it. We all had to quarantine. 14 days after we buried her. Sitting there in that house, me and Mary by ourselves, our families down there. We, we take food. We had food in our house because we were going to have Christmas in our house this year. The rest of them starved. <laughs> Actually, Mary Cook, and we run a little shuttle service, and we delivered food and just set it out on the steps. Got in the car, went back to the house. I guess they cleansed all that stuff. I don't know. They ate it all I know. We got empty jars back, so all I know. You say, well, what are you saying? I was sitting there within 14 days, quarantined at the house. Boy, I tell you, I miss my mom. For two weeks while she was in that hospital, I didn't get to see her. They wouldn't allow nobody in. My mom couldn't hardly talk good. She talked where where she'd had that stroke or stroke, her speech had been affected. And she didn't talk good, and we advocated that somebody needed to be there for her. Man, they just wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't allow nobody in. Boy, my sister, when she was gone, they called me and my sister. I've never seen Deborah, my oldest sister, go in such a, a, a state of uh, sorrow and grief. She told me, she said, Randy, I just can't hardly bear it in my mind. She said, it's all I, she said, it's just about to consume me. She said, I just can't stand the thought of the fact that Mama laid over there in two weeks and she had to die by herself. Boy, I'm going to tell you, when my sister said that God quickened my yeah, spirit, yeah. I said, Deborah, I want to tell you something. I said, you hear your brother now? I said, this ain't your brother speaking. This is the preacher speaking. Yeah. I said, hey, she didn't lay over there by herself. That's my right, doctor man. said that he put angels at the head and at the foot, and he could bear you. At least you could dash your foot against a stone. You say, that's misquoting and misrepresenting. That's bad theology. That scripture the devil used upon Jesus. No, that scripture was already there before the devil 
try to use it on Jesus. Uh, dear friend, and I got news for you. If I'm a Christian, which means Christ's life, I'm part of his family. Right. Amen. And he has my betterment, uh, dear friend, in mind. And I got news for you. Can I enlighten y'all on one other yeah. thing? COVID did not get my mother, dear friend, Jesus called. Yeah. He exported her home. Yes. yes. Do you know one of the only places that Satan has a chance to get a redeemed soul out of the hand of God is in that exporting from this world to that world. He said, oh, you jumped off in deep water now, preacher. No, you remember when Moses sinned, struck the rock, supposed to spoke to it, but he struck it. God said, you're not going to get to go over into the promised land. He said, but I'll take let you see it. He showed it to him. Yep. And when it come time for Moses to die, God took him and buried him in a place and only God knew where it was at. Amen. But God and Satan, dear friend, got into dispute over the body of Moses. Mm. Satan said, I want it. I want his body. You know why I want his body? To try to discredit and, de and defile what God had done. Oh, you say, what are you saying? One of the only places they had a chance to jerk Moses out of the grip of grace was in that exportation between earth and glory. Mm. You know one of the reasons why, dear friend, his angels escort us home mm. when it comes time for us to leave this walk of life? God already knew because he's already dealt with him. That Satan's desire would be to snatch us out of the hand of the Holy Father. And buddy, I'm going to tell you what he's done. He's sealed us until the day of redemption. Yes. Dear friend, why? I'm telling you, dear friend, I'm being protected. Amen. I've got something better than all state. <laughs> I say to you tonight, how great a salvation is it? Yes. What a day it'll be when salvation is finally consummated. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. When they can't crown him king of kings, and they can't do it until all the redeemed get there. Amen. Huh? Amen. <laughs> Save me a seat. If you get there before I do. Amen. 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 Put a booster chair in it, because I'll probably need it. <laughs> you say, what are you saying? You say, well, who's this salvation for, preacher? Whosoever will. Amen. Amen. Let them come. Yes. Drink of the water of life. Yes. Freely. Yes. Amen. How can it be free? Because he already Amen. paid the price. Amen. 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 How is exciting is that? Amen. Amen. Yes. He paid a debt that I owed. Mm -hmm. And he paid it. In full. Amen. By the blood of the Lamb. If he did all of that for me, is there anything that he could ask of me in return that could be called or deemed unreasonable? Would it be unreasonable for me to live holy and upright? Would it be unreasonable to continually lay my life on an altar of prayer and say, as the psalmist said, search me, try me, know me, and if you see any wicked way in me, lead me to the paths of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Would that be unreasonable for me to come on a daily basis and ask him to search my heart? You see, I know some Baptists that got saved, and I believe they're generally saved. But they hadn't been to an altar of repentance in so long because their pride just won't allow them to walk down the aisle in front of other people and humble themselves before God and ask Him for forgiveness. Oh, I'll tell you this. You can decide tonight, I can either humble myself here or I'll have to humble myself there 
For he said, every knee shall bow. Amen. Every tongue yes. will confess. Yes. I've chosen to do my bowing and my confessing here. Yes. Amen. But when I get there, I can hear him say, well done. You endured it all, son, yeah. through the help and the leadership of the Holy Spirit that I placed in your heart. Yeah. Welcome to the joys of the Lord. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can I tell y'all something? Yeah. If they don't have one mansion there and it ain't nothing but cabins, <laughs> I still won't go. Amen. 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 If they tear down the walls of Jasper and, and put up wrought iron and never paint that stuff, <laughs> I still want to go. Amen. 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 That's right. If he takes up those transparent streaks of gold and lays down gravel and never gets around to paving it, <laughs> I still want to go. Amen. 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 That's right. You say, why? Because, see, those are all materialistic things. Yeah. Thing that'll make heaven right. heaven to me Amen. is the scars yes. in yes. his hands yep. and feet. Yes. Scars in his brow. Yes. Scars in his side. Why? Because when I see that, yes. I'll see why Paul said it's so great. Because if you can look at those scars and still be standing there looking at them, then you ain't served the one I've served. And I'm telling you, when I get to heaven and realize it was not of my works lest I should boast, but it was the gift of God yes. through Jesus' sacrifice that he made at Calvary. He looks there and say, well done. Yes. Come on in, my good and faithful servant. Yes. Yes. And I look and see those scars. Yeah. I don't know what you would do. I'm going to fall at his feet. Yes. You know the 20 and 4 elders at the mention of his name fall on their face as though they were dead and worshiped him? Yeah. Those 20 and 4 elders, dear friend, were created spiritual spring beings that would never need a Savior. But yet they fall on their face and worship Him. You and I, who needed a Savior, and God so loved us yes. that He sent the darling Lamb of God. Yes. Yes. We were dead, the Bible said, in trespassing and sin. How long did you work for Hartzell? 25 years. 25 years. Once you get them people on that slab, they ain't going to work. They ain't bothering nobody. I got locked up in a casket room one time at a funeral home <laughs> when I was a boy. Now, you couldn't convince me of that back then. <laughs> My cousin locked me up, turned the light out, and run. I was a grown man before I got over that phobia. <laughs> Go see me jumping for that light cord. You say, what are you getting? Dead folks don't bother nobody. It's the living that bothers people. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. City of the dead, that's just that old earthen tabernacle, that old tent that's been folded up and put away. But it's the soul that lives forever. Yes. I want to ask you a question tonight. Have you ever met Jesus? I'm talking about really met Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference in hearing about him and meeting him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Satan knows who he is. Amen. Right. But he never accepted him. I want to ask you if tonight was the last night on this earth and you had to face it. The one who died just for you. Are you ready for that? Or would you have to say, Lord, could you give me just a little more time? It 
said, no. Because I gave so great of a sacrifice. Yes. And I paid it in full. Amen. And I gave you ample time to choose. And you didn't use your time wisely then. And you can't have my time now. Right. Are you ready for that? Should it happen tonight? And if you're here and you've been saved, and there was a time in your life that you knew you were right with God, but you sat in this building tonight, and you've heard a message about how so great a salvation we have. And it stirs your remembrance of how exciting it was for you when you were nestled up right close to the breastplate of God. But tonight as you were sitting here, you're reminded how miserable you are. Because he didn't move. You did. You've been reminded tonight how great a salvation that he gave you, but how you've taken it for granted. Well, you know, if things that we take for granted sometimes becomes a drudgery to us. See, I'm not serving God tonight out of obligation. I'm serving him out of delight. Amen. 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 Yeah. That hell will never be my home. Amen. That's right. Because of so great a salvation yes. that he offered to me. Yes. Yes. If it's a burden to you to serve the Lord, what you might need to do is run back to him. Yeah. And say, God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's right. I've taken you for granted. And I've taken what you've done for me. And I have just counted it as though it was nothing. Mm -hmm. Tonight I've realized if I'd have been the only person on earth, you would have died just for me. That's right, amen. I'm asking you tonight, would you live just for him? Amen. Amen. Stand your feet. You're here tonight. I usually have people bow their heads, close their eyes, and raise their hands if they have a need. But I've about quit doing that, and I'll tell you why. Because I believe if you preach this gospel and you preach it the way God intends you to preach it, when you get to the invitation time, you won't have to have them bow their head and raise their hand. They'll already have their heart made up of what they need to do with Jesus. So tonight, if you're here and never been saved, I'm going to move to the center of the aisle. Brother Clinton, you don't have to come. You just sit right there. I'll have to get Brother Gary to help me. Brother Clinton's been down in his back. We've got a high school of preachers here tonight. And if I need you, I'll call you. And if I call you, I'm calling you to come help lead somebody to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you're here lost and you've never met Jesus and you want to meet him, and you want to take part in this old oh, so great salvation, you come as Mary sings. But if you're here tonight and you've been saved, but you're not where you ought to be, this oh so great a salvation has lost its luxury to you. But I'm going to tell you to me, the closer I get home, the older I get, the more precious it becomes to me. Amen. The old song says, He is to me more precious than good. Yeah. Is he to you? Amen. If you can't say that when Mary's saying, you don't have to come give me your hand. You already know who you need to be talking to. You just find your place in these altars, kneel, and you say, you say, preacher, what I ought to say? I ought to say, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Yes. First and foremost for dying just for me. Amen. I'm sorry I haven't been living like I should for you. Yes. But I'm asking you to forgive me. Yes. 
Here's what he said. If you'll draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Amen. He said, if you'll open up, Amen. I'll come in and sup Amen. with you. That's reason with you. When's the last time you had the king of glory offer to even listen to your side? Whoa. A judge very rare, rarely will listen to your side. He goes by the evidence that's been produced before him. And he rules on it. But you've got a Savior tonight that loves you so much. He says, come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. That's a good God. Amen. That's a merciful God. That's a loving Savior. Would you come? As Mary says. All of your children. How great is he to you tonight? Are you saved? You know, if you were to come for me tonight, you had to be so sorry. You know that, you know that, you know that, you know that you passed from death unto life and your Redeemer lived. If you don't, come to Jesus. Are you here tonight, been saved? Say, preacher, I know I'm saved. I know that man shattered and died. But as you was preaching about it, being so excited, I'm afraid I've lost my sight. Let me tell you something about the cares of this world. The cares of this world can rob the Christian of the excitement of serving Jesus. Amen. Financial hard times can take the excitement of serving Jesus away. Losing your health can take the excitement of loving Jesus away. COVID has took the excitement of serving Jesus away from a lot of people. Amen. Death can take the excitement of serving Jesus away from a lot of people. How long has it been that you just ran to the altar and fell at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, turn me back on again. gets renewed and my heart gets excited. It affects my mind and then my mind affects my hands. It affects my feet. It affects my eyes. It affects my mouth when I get turned on in my heart for the excitement of Christ. Remember when you first got saved? Remember when salvation come to your house? Remember how
We're saying we know we won't quit. We're saying we know we get mad at God. We get bitter. Hello. I had a preacher friend by the name of Casey Barnhill, 36 years old, died with pancreatic cancer. Two days before he died, he called me on the phone. He said, hey, Doc, he said, I just wanted to tell you, the pleasure's all been mine. I said, well, Casey, I don't understand. He said, you ain't got to say all that. He said, hey, I asked God if this was my life, this is how he's going to take me. Let me go quick. He said, I just want to call and tell you today what a joy it's been to serve the Lord alongside of you. I appreciate all the prayers and the help. And he said, I'm fixing to cut me a trail. His mama said he hung the phone up for me and he put his Bible on his chest. Dear friend, in about two hours he brought his last breath and went home. You say 36 years old. Don't you guess he is bitter? No, honey. He shouted around. Why? Because he had a great God. Amen. He had so great a salvation. If your salvation ain't foolproof, hello, and fireproof, you might want to check and make sure you've got the right salvation. Amen. Mine's foolproof. Hello. Mine's also foolproof. <laughs> Amen. Because I've been my own worst enemy at times. Amen. I've acted right. mighty foolish a lot of times in my life. You know what he's done? He loved me in spite of me. Yes. Yes. Right. Come Amen. searching for me when I didn't even want to be found. That's right. How many of you are glad to come to church tonight? Amen. 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 He said, well, I ain't heard Randy Perry preach in years. Well, I ain't changed. <laughs> Just got old. <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going out of here swinging at the fences. Amen. 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 He said, what do you mean? I played baseball when I was, I don't know, growing up in middle school. I didn't play when I was in high school. They didn't have a baseball team in high school. Where I went, they had it in middle grade, Little League. I played all through Little League. Man, I'm going to tell you, my coach was a boy named Ricky Jones. Old Ricky would come over to me. I was the smallest player on our team. I played shortstop. Imagine that. Amen. I'd get up ready for bat. Old Ricky Jones would come over and whisper me here. And here's what he would say. He'd say, little man, swing for the fence. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I hit a many of a home run. Listening to Ricky Jones, my coach saying, swing for the fence. You say, why? Oh, I think it'll be worth it all. Amen. When you cross home, play. Amen. Amen. Three man. And he has to call you safe. Amen. Christians, keep swinging for the fence. Amen. It'll be worth it all when we cross home, play. Amen. Amen. Yes. And he exports us out here. God bless you. I love you. We do have our stuff over here. We'll be over here to the side. We've got, we make our own T-shirts. I got one shirt over there. It's on Carolina blue that says, Not today, Satan. Some of y'all need that and wear it in front of your husband. Amen. When he gets out of bed. Amen. <laughs> I got one over there that says, I'm not old. I'm just vintage. Amen. Yeah, I like that. Amen. But we've got all kinds of shirts. We print our own shirts. Go by and see Sister Mary. Got singing CDs. Every song we sing over there. And uh, Brother Gary was talking about this thing here. We actually call this our cross bearers ministry and uh, we started doing this probably 20 years ago and we've been doing it and we've had people come along that said brother Randy we would like to be a member of a cross bearers and we would like to help bear the cross and help get you to a place that we could never go to and share the gospel Amen. and I won't tell you uh, I used to never count how many people got saved under our ministry but about I've been preaching December will be 28 years. I'll start my 28th year in evangelism. And about the 20th year, I started keeping up with how many people have been saved. 7,431 people. Wow. Lord, yes. 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 Listen, I did not save one of them. But a lot of good people partnered with us through Cross Bears Ministry. And they helped get us to the place to where we could be the mouthpiece of God. Mm -hmm. That God would speak through us.
to a lost and dying world. Amen. And I'm telling you, for almost two years, when I went through all of these heart uh, problems and all these surgeries, if it hadn't been for these cross bearer people that helped us, we'd have probably lost everything we had. Mm -hmm. I know we would have. But God, Amen. 20 years earlier, yes. Yes, laid it upon our heart and said, just ask them if they want to help partner with you and become part of the cross bearers ministry. He said, take up your cross and follow me. That's right. But some of you can't go to Virginia. Some of you can't go to Oklahoma. Some of you can't go to Nova Scotia. Some of you can't go to Texas and California. But you can help get us there. Amen. Amen. You see what our ministry is about. So if you'd like to partner with us, this is one way you can do that. You can do it monthly. You can do it one time. I'm not begging. He said, my seat doesn't have to be for you. Yeah, sure don't. I'm just letting you know that it's available. And if you'd like to be a part of a ministry that's about winning souls. Listen, church. I'm not here to straighten people out on doctrinal differences. Nope. That's not my job. Nope. That's a pastor's job. Nope. You take your doctrinal issues up with your own members. I'm a man, and I'm here to preach against sin yep. and preach about the Savior. Amen. His willingness to save anybody, anywhere, anytime That's right. that'll humble themselves and come when he calls. Yep. I'll tell you, that's what we need a bunch of in these days. Yep. Amen. 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 I'm telling you this. I'm sure glad he'd come a-looking for me one night. Amen. Me too, brother. Amen. Me too. Stuck in the little old mountains of North Georgia. A little eight-year-old boy. Come where he needs. Can I tell you, I was bashful mm -hmm. and so shy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't talk. I was buck to. My teeth stuck straight out. I wouldn't smile, Brother Roger, because people made fun of me. And so I would walk around, and they couldn't get me to say nothing. When I did say anything, I was so country, and my vocabulary was so country. Most people would have to say, excuse me, what you say? God saved me. Amen. 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 Yes. And I'll tell you, when he saved me, Amen. he loosed my tongue. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm going to tell you, I've run my mouth about race cars. I've run my mouth about football and baseball and all kind of other things, my grandkids and everything, but I want to use my life to run in my mouth Amen. about how great a salvation we have yeah, amen. through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. amen, brother. God bless you. Come see Mary over there. And uh, hey, listen, tomorrow night we start at 7 o'clock. Everybody say 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Listen, I know people work, yeah, and I'll try my six. best to have you out by 8.30 if we start at 7 o'clock. Hour and a half ain't too much to ask out of you, is it? Amen. 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 Now, if God comes along, the Holy Ghost gets to blowing, and we don't get out to 9 o'clock, don't you complain about it. Amen. 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 If you do complain about it, shame on you when you're sitting there watching that 134th episode of Andy Griffith, and you already know the window pane that Ernestine Bass is fixing to knock out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. I love you tonight, and God bless you. It's my prayer. I'll see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Pastor.